your story? Um, well, I am a mother of a child who has Asperger's syndrome. In the very beginning, um, my son, who was two years old, called me number two. I was not mommy. I was not her. I wasn't the, you know, woman of the house. I was number two. Daddy was number four, and Kayla, his older sister, was number five. We kind of thought there was something a little, you know, suspicious going on. He had, he was a normal kid, but he just wouldn't talk. And we thought, okay, because he had an older sibling of eight and a half years, you know, she did all the talking for him, and he did basically all the grunting and the pointing. But it was something a little more. With the advisory of a, a woman from a program called the Blue Baby Ribbon Society, she says, let's just do an assessment on him, see what happens. Well, he was severely delayed in speech language. Lisa, there's a bunch of red flags going on here, and it's pointing towards autism. So it was something that we chose not to ignore. We chose to pursue it and find out what's going on. And the hurdles we had to jump. Garth and I learned, our parents, the family, when we became more socially aware of what it was like to live or to be someone with Asperger's. It's not visual. To look at my son, you would go, he looks like a normal kid. And yeah, he does. But it's the way his brain is wired. And so you see the prejudice. How is he gonna function? Asperger's actually, it, the easiest way for me to explain is what we do socially, they need to be taught. What we do academically, they come by it naturally. Donald's first word, he is fascinated with words. His first word he spelled was irrefutable. He was three. And we live with it. I mean, this is our child. We love him the same way as any other parent would love their child. Um, he thinks different. He acts different. Um, he questions things socially because he does not understand social. Um, he, he's, he's academically fine. Comprehension is a little, you know, off the wall, but it's like his little mind is a computer. And to be the parent as the programmer is amazing. It's like, I think every parent should have an Asperger's child because they just absorb like sponge, keep it in a file in their brain, and recall it when they need it. Donald's eight now. He reads at a grade six level. He does math, of course, as a grade three student, but he comprehends grade nine, 10, 11, and 12 uh, type mathematics. As parents, I love my son. I mean, he's no different than any other kid, right? Okay, so he thinks differently. It's a good thing. Bill Gates thinks differently. I think he's Asperger's. Albert Einstein, they believe he had Asperger's. There are really famous people in this world who have that. And they survived. They became famous. They became famous for thinking outside of the box. And that's what I love about autism and Asperger's. These kids have so much to offer. And they, they have, you know, an ability to change the world. And if we don't help them in some way, shape, or form, we could be laying stagnant forever and ever probably the most important uh, medical research that should be done out there. I can't say is, but should be done out there. You know, just not so much as a cure for autism or Asperger's, but an understanding and a be able, the ability to be able to cope and grow and even learn, self-learn about it. That's what's important. That's, and that's why it needs to be done. It really, truly needs to be done and not ignored. Let's put our brains together and support brain research.